Hello and welcome to our new and last episode of Hortensia's TV show. Finishing our international business life concepts, today we are going to talk about um, Levendari Cafe, the China Challenge. Today this will be a very, very interesting case because we will close all the international approach and the different strategies and entry mode with this last case uh, looking forward to answer all your questions, all the questions you have done all over the show uh, for your firm to go international in the best way possible. So, here we will have an intercultural approach of businesses with the growth and development of an American restaurant that it is Legendary Cafe in China. Legendary Cafe is a popular chain of cafes founded by Howard Leventhal, a visionary businessman that wanted to work on the restaurant's industry. It started as a small Denver, with a small Denver soup, salads and a sandwich restaurant and in 2011 um, there was a change in the CEO, Mia Foster was the new CEO that had to face many new challenges uh, trying to take um, this restaurant chain into an international um, area. It was her first job as, as a CEO, so it was very difficult for her for working on it because many people didn't um, realize or didn't believe on what she can do. But then uh, she erased all this skepticism of everyone and she took the company to a very good international path. So now, welcome my two important guests of, of today two members of this Levantari cafe, cafe that have seen all its trajectory and the growth in the international market, especially in China. Welcome! Thank, thank, thank you. you very much. Okay, well, um, hello everyone, my name is Carol and now I'm going to talk about a little bit the multi-unit restaurant business. Uh, and well, it's important to understand that uh, by 2010, the United States a state's restaurant and contract food service industry was a $600 billion industry uh, with now 960,000 locations. A multi unit restaurant concepts represented uh, approximately 30% of the industry by units with independent operations uh, as the balance. It was highly fragmented and uh, even industry giant like McDonald's generated just the 2% of the total revenues of this industry. Um, the three categorized industry segments uh, in this kind of industry world were the first that was the specialty establishments that were like Starbucks, Dunkin Donuts, Baskin Robbins, Robbins that uh, they used to sell uh, units of products like under five dollars. The second uh, segment is quick service restaurants that are mainly fast foods uh, like McDonald's, Taco Bell, and Wendy's that used to sell uh, units units between four to ten dollars. And the third industry was casual dinner, uh, dining that was restaurants like Olive Garden, Applebee's, and Outback that were table service uh, for dinner uh, entries and they were um, from 8 to 20 dollars um, as an average. Uh, the, um, an emerging category is uh, the quick ca casual, there is a, a restaurant like casual uh, like Panda Express and Chipotle and a legendary like other quick casual restaurants promise the wholesome choices that it's quick service cousins and now more uh, informal self-serving dining experience. It was a um, well, legendary is with restaurant that sell units like from eight to twelve dollars. So it's like um, it's not uh, very low, but it's very high. So the restaurant cost structure was defined by occupancy, by labor, but by food and by supply. Okay, hi everyone, my name is Maria Paula. I'm going to talk about a little bit about the foundations and the structure of the company. So, Levendary Cafe was uh, distinguished by two elements. The uh, first one was sell soup, salads, and sandwiches using high quality ingredients. And 
and commitment to service in a comfortable and friendly environment. Um, also, by its willingness to take risks. As an example, when the company decides to use uh, only organic grains uh, in its breads and hormone free naturally raised uh, meats in its sandwiches. Uh, so, the company had uh, seven areas or activities. And the first one was concept develops, develops uh, what the brand means and represents uh, to the customer through the food, to the food development and marketing. We have marketing that is in charge of the logo, the store uh, decor and media image that use earth color uh, to communicate natural and wholesome uh, goodness. Uh, the food, uh, the company had a test kitchen and food uh, science laboratory, laboratory that um, was in charge of making the adaptation, the necessary adaptations um, to supply their components with quality and, and consistency. Um, the operation, so the operations uh, were so controlled because the managers had to report to area directors and these uh, area directors had to report to uh, the vice president. So um, this structure, a structure allowed to tight control of the store expenses and monitoring the operations. And the franchise, about two thirds of legendary stores were franchised. Uh, business development. Um, it was uh, the source of new revenue opportunities, uh, such as legendary branded grocery items like coffee, cold cuts, and soups. And the last one, the administrative staff, staff groups. Having all these things clear, the products, the, the in industry structure, and all the aspects relevant to this legendary cafe, now, uh, Talking about the international business life, we are going to talk about this company expanding, expanding abroad with the China dream. In 2008, the company's domestic growth was becoming slower and they needed to look for an international opportunity um, with an expansion strategy to grow abroad. The biggest opportunity was found in the Asian market because of the emergence and the importance of this market and was found in China an emerging and big market that could give many benefits to the company. With its big population and its important GDP, China was ripe for investment. There was an affluent middle class, the capacity of people for buying things was becoming higher, and they were wanting a different uh, idea in the restaurant industry, so for the Vendari Cafe what was a very important uh, and great opportunity. There were also many other restaurant chains growing in this market, such as Pizza Hut and McDonald's, as, as Karen was explaining. But um, Leventary Cafe saw a very different opportunity with a different concept that, that was this kind of fast food uh, restaurant, but, but with a, an improved and better service in which people could feel like in a higher class, not only buying a $1 hamburger in McDonald's, but um, a special dish in Leventari Cafe. After a deep research, Leventari's board decided to enter China. This decision was a very difficult task and um, it was like um, hastened by the appearance of Louis Chen, a Chinese guy that had been working in international business for a long time and uh, which they found the perfect candidate for entering the market. To prepare for the assignment, he became a rotational intern in each of the major areas of the company. Um, so uh, he learned many things about everything that concerned the world development of it. And then he learned everything about the business. He knew it would, it would be difficult, but he was very confident of what he can do and also because of his capabilities. Another impo important aspect uh, that made him the better choice was the issue that he knew many languages. He, know, he knew English, um, Mandarin, Chinese, and Chinese, the native language. So uh, it, was, it would be very easy for him to communicate. And also he had many contacts um, in order 
networking in order to contact e everyone to have like different permissions to know where to put the restaurants and all that idea. He opened his first location in 2010 in Shanghai as a prominent and luxurious restaurant and within a year his initial location had grown into a change of 23 restaurants, a very impressive growth in this market. Well, continuing a little bit uh, talking about the expansion in China, um, for Foster, there, there had to happen a little, well, huge important decisions for the company. So, uh, it was a very big uh, challenge for her discharge, but she had double great, great hopes for level that he, uh, in China. However, she had no opportunity to close the exam in the China business because when she became CEO in 2011, she was surprised to find that the Chinese subsidiary submitted of management and financial reports to Denver in its own format. And then uh, the finance group adapted, adapted reports to Lemonberry format, format and it was a non-sustainable sustainable, um, practice for Foster. I mean, uh, it was like a lot of work unnecessary for the company, so she decided that if they had to change, la change like in this part of reports. So for that, a, a series of meetings of her when a, the main facts were were the following: where they made three principal meetings. The first meeting um, was like when she uh, reported the option to bring uh, the China reporting in line with the United States reporting. So she favored hiring an international financial analyst uh, for the Denver Finance team, and uh, throughout. And she thought also that Lemondary Auditor should also manage the China audit. So the idea was like to to integrate uh, all all the things of uh, audit thing, audit issues. Also, um, both steps were expensive but seemed necessary for a public for, for a publicly traded company that intended to stake its future and growth in Chinese market. A chain did not agree with this proposal proposal and he said they were not necessary because of the cost uh, and she was not he was no uh, he did not agree with foster a uh, proposal so uh, however she was standing in her position even if the relationship with him didn't seem to to be very easy uh, that was like an issue that made her think about it was a, a big test for her but that's when in the second meeting she confronted uh, many of these issues and um, it was like a second video conference so Foster sent Chen a copy of Steele's findings um, opening the discussion about that China was critical to Lavender growth and she wanted to be more involved in discussions about uh, the plans that were more international specifically to China because for her there was a big potential for this uh, country. Uh, also, uh, Chen responded in, in such an angry way uh, like having not faith, not faith in, the t in the Chinese market uh, and after that, Foster reviewed the research and was uh, was keenly aware of the difficulties of localizing a chain restaurant concept in a foreign market and the major trade-offs entailed. But, um, she had a confusion between the appropriate model of restaurants, if changing, if changing or not, um, like the concept of levendary for China, <coughs> yielding is likely to change point of view. Um, after the video conference, some big issues raised for her, and the first was like what strategy should make a, an implement for those decisions, How, uh, who should be responsible uh, for making uh, and implementing those, those decisions, and what changes should be making the roles, responsibilities, and relationships uh, that link China's management to the home office. Uh, and then, well, Maria Paula will tell us what the main points uh, about the following future of the of the company. Okay, uh, before talking about the entry mode and the strategy strategy of the company, I would like to add that the Levendary um, was built on a culture of delaying the customer. So the founder always say to the employees, like, forget today's profit. 
and just focus on have a positive impact on consumers' mind and lives and make them want to come back. So the founder was thinking about long term and that's all. With all of this that they were talking about, it was very difficult for Foster, the new CEO, to have a good relation with the Chinese guy that was implementing the, the restaurant in the, in, China, in the Chinese market. And the entry mode he used was franchising. Franchising is, can be defined as a system in which semi-independent business owners, franchises, pay fees and royalties to a parent company, franchiser in return for the right to become identified with its trademark to sell its products or services and often to use its business format and system. This was a perfect entry mode for Levendari to enter the Chinese market, but what happened and what the company problem had was that uh, the Chinese guy didn't respect these franchising agreements. So he started implementing many restaurants, but not, not with this luxurious idea and the concept that Maria Paula was telling that the founder had as main idea for the restaurant. So even though the entry mode was a great one, it was not well implemented. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about a little about the strategy. Uh, it was like multinational because um, the the Levendari's menu was flexible, and like uh, and the menu had like some local adaptation adaptation depends on the place, and they don't believe. They didn't believe in uh, such thing like American consumer like McDonald's did that just established an standardized um, menu. So, um, Levendari wa was more like flexible. Now, the solution of the company. <laughs> well, now, the solution of the company. Um, well, first, uh, just for getting into, into the topic. The main problem the company has, what was a, uh, was I tell it what was what I was talking about? That was the problem of relationship between the Chinese guy and the CEO because of the idea of franchising. As Maria Paula said, it was an international strategy, like with a global concept, in order to adapt the different dishes and the menus for certain markets. But the problem they had was that. Um, the Chinese guy wanted to do the things in his way and not as the company wanted. So Carol will tell, tell us now the solution of the company. For uh, the audience, if you have any problem in such a way, here is the solution we propose. Well, uh, we thought about a solution uh, that involves deciding if uh, they really wanted to continue with the Chinese business in a different way or to close the restaurants, the restaurants that chain open with a different concept than the actual of the of the restaurant. We think um, it's important to understand that, um, for example, I see that Foster uh, was trusting pretty too much in Chinese uh, pot potential, but Chen didn't. So I think um, it's like, what will happen if they trust a little bit on that market and they try things that would fit? Uh, they mainly don't know, but I think they should try uh, I'm believing that, like not being super uh, strict with all of what they're going to do, but being a little bit flexible, maybe adapt to the market, but uh, like giving it the opportunity to 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 give results. If not, what they will have with other strategies, but not being close to that opportunities that Foster is offering for them, and also uh, depending on what they want and what they prefer. Uh, considering uh, all the important as aspects, and that was that was what I was saying. Like maybe they need to evaluate uh, at first if they try with the main um, structure of the restaurant, and if it doesn't work, try with uh, many changes that uh, are adap adaptive to the market. So thank you again for our guests uh, for being here, and thank you audience for um, watching our shows uh, in the International Business Life. We will be looking forward for um, implementing a new idea, not about business, but maybe about cultural aspects, in order for your companies to be international and to manage everything in the best way possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.